everybody, it's Michelle Lavore and Devin Lavore coming, coming at, at you. <laughs> I almost forgot to say my name, but anyway, <laughs> I was it like, oh wait, I'm up. That's right. Grab your bat. Let's go. <laughs> but um, it's like double dutch. I had to jump in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. wait a minute. It's your turn. <laughs> From. And oh. so to begin, we just want to say a huge welcome to any and all new subscribers. I'm so glad that you guys have found us and, you know, oh, no. just uh, <laughs> pray <laughs> that you guys are truly encouraged um, in your own walks with the Lord. Too many kids movies. <laughs> Too many <laughs> kids movies. <laughs> And um, and a huge thank you for everyone who um, continues to support us and gives to us, and it's really just the way that the Lord has us um, in in this place right now, um, where He yes. He truly is our provider, um, and it comes through um, all of you who just yeah. continue to give. So just thank a huge you guys thank so you. Much. Yeah. And if Praise you would, the Lord. Yes. <laughs> and if you would like to give, we do have a PayPal link below, and you can just click that. And any amount is welcome, and we just really appreciate everything yeah. that's given. Yeah. And also, Every thank you, everyone, for your comments, and just mm -hmm. um, we just really like reading those and just kind of seeing where where you guys are at and how the Lord is just um, moving and speaking in your own lives. Yeah, we do read them. Yeah. We, do, we scroll through them and we read them and it's just some of them ca crack us up. Yeah. Some of them we go, oh yeah, 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 I feel you there, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we yeah. just don't have time to, the Lord's really removed us from responding because it's yeah. it literally will become a part-time job. Yeah. Responding to all the, <laughs> just know that we love you, okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's what we have for the announcement part of the video. But again, if you would like to give to us, we... Um, are in need just constantly and so just girl we got some needs right now i know <laughs> so that's it for the announcement section of our video yep. and we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to Devin. so today i wanted to uh I'll, i feel like the lord wanted me to share something um that i feel is like in the deeper parts of his heart mm -hmm. if this makes sense to you i hope it will let the lord lead and speak to you you know, because a lot of times, you know, we're, we're asking, God, share with us your heart, your heart, your heart, you know, mm -hmm. not just information about being good Christians. We yeah. want to know your heart, you know, and we cry out for God's heart and all that stuff. And and um, I really feel like what God wanted me to share today, he actually gave me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, cool thing is, yesterday was June 18th. Mm -hmm. And we have been here in Nashville for 18 months. Yeah. Which is really cool because on the 18th yeah. was our 18 months. Which is really cool because we've been seeing 1818 18 a lot. Yeah. And I'm just like, Lord, all right. We haven't seen that one in a while. What are you saying there? What are you saying? And um, that's kind of the gist of the message today. It's based in um, Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. As soon as I saw it, I was like, bingo, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Found that Easter egg, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, and so what the Lord was wanting to say to us today, is to say, it's one of those, you know, Jesus would say a lot of things to his disciples, right? Mm -hmm. But he'd get to those moments where he'd be like, hey, listen, truly, I tell you this. Yeah. And he would say something that's just like, listen, everything I'm saying is true because I am the word of God made flesh and everything I'm going to say is, but listen to this right here. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that's one of these messages today. Yeah, it's like the pay careful attention. Yeah. It's like this, I'm about to drop some science, like we used to say back in the 80s. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for those of you who may not know, God does speak to us through lots of different signs and things and different, different ways he speaks to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's through numbers. Because um, we'll see the same number over and over and over and over and over again, and we'll be like, "Lord, what are you, what are you saying through this?" And we were, we have been seeing the number fifty-one and forty-nine like cray cray. Am I right? Yes. Even our kids yeah. are saying, "Oh, look at that! It says one fifty-one or something." I'm like, "What? 
Yeah. Are you serious? It's like, okay, God's trying to get us, get our attention. Okay, what do you want? You know, God used the burning bush. I mean, God used so many different things mm -hmm. in the Old Testament that were just like, if we, if we said, oh, God did this today, we'd be like, that was not the Lord. But it's in the Bible, so you can't argue with it. Yeah. And so prophetic numbers are nothing. I mean, it's just like, yeah. it's just a way of God getting your attention, and it's fun for him. And so... Long story short, it led us to Isaiah 51 and Isaiah 49. And this is all a part of what I'm going to share today because a lot of times God will take a lot of elements mm -hmm. and throw them into this stew that he's calling my word to my people. Yeah. And Isaiah 51 and 40, Isaiah 49, I would highly encourage you to read it because it's like, yeah. it, it, it may jump off the page at you as well. Mm -hmm. It's so, so profound what, what God was speaking to us through that. But what I wanted to touch on really quick was that Isaiah 51, verse 1, and Isaiah 49, verse 1, say the exact same thing. The verse, well, the first three words are the exact same thing. And Isaiah 51, in our translation, it says, verse 1, it says, hearken to me. Mm -hmm. And in Isaiah 49... Verse 1, it says, listen to me. Yeah. But then it goes on to say, listen to me, O coastlands and islands, and hearken to me, uh, other people. And I'm just like, wow, the yeah. Lord is really saying, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying mm -hmm. in these uh, chapters and verses that I'm giving you. Listen to me. Yeah. You know, because what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is weighty. It's like, it's really, really a part of my heart that I, I really want you to get this. Because mm -hmm. it's deep for me. And of course, by the title, you already know what it is. <laughs> it's like, I will come. Yeah. But will you be waiting? Mm -hmm. I will come. But will you be waiting? And so, so I'm going to just start with scripture on this one because I want to just get into the things that God shared with me. Recently, God gave me a word. And... <laughs> And, you know, I love it when God gives words, and I really sometimes don't like it when God gives words because the timing factor always jumps on my back and wrestles me down, and I have to kick it in the face and knock it out and be like, you don't belong here, get out of my life, you know? <laughs> and I think it was, I don't know if it was last Wednesday, I think it was sooner than that, though, maybe Thursday or Friday, and I got this word from the Lord it could have been about a week ago, right? Mm -hmm. And it was from Isaiah 38, verse 20. I kind of mentioned this said briefly in our previous yeah. video, but I wanted to read it again. It's from uh, Isaiah chapter 38, verse 20. It says, The Lord is ready to save and deliver me. Wait, the Lord is ready to save, deliver me. <laughs> Therefore, we will sing my songs with my stringed instruments all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord. Now, I felt like there was two applications to that. I felt like the Lord was like, I'm always ready mm -hmm. to deliver you. In my heart, I'm always ready. But things aren't always ready. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like the Lord was like, but he's, he's constantly ready to deliver us in whatever areas we need. And as soon as he gave us that word, we started seeing some deliverance in certain areas and some breakthrough in some certain areas. And again, the breakthrough was coming through a, a bunch of messiness, <laughs> just like birth. It's like there's something's being born that's given life. Life is being brought to something, but it's messy, you know, relationally and whatnot. And so, so that's that's foundation stone number one. <laughs> the Lord is ready to save and deliver me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so which and so then he took me to Isaiah uh, chapter thirty-five. And remember, all of this is. He's feeding this vision of, I will come, but will you be waiting? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I'm going to Isaiah 35, verse 4. It says, say to those who are a fearful, who are of a fearful and hasty heart. Let's just stop there. Um, that lets you know that we're going to be dealing with fearfulness. And because we're afraid, we're going to want to make a hasty decision to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. And God's like, don't do that. You're going to get yourself out of position of the blessing that is coming, okay? So, say to those who are of a fearful and hasty heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. 
which is interesting because those there was those two days I mentioned in our previous video where I just felt so beat up and such a failure. And two nights in a row, God spoke strength and courage and bravery to my heart. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that was totally me right there. So it's like the Holy Spirit himself is doing what he tells you to do. Yeah. You know, it's like, say to those who have a fearful and hasty heart or who are broken and beaten down, say to them, hey, hey, God's going to come. So be encouraged and sing your songs, bro. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Get your praise on. Anyway, <laughs> so then he led me to Matthew 25. Now, you know I'm not going to read Matthew 25, all of it. But it's got some, simil it's got some uh, significant stories. The parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins. Well, the bridegroom, long story short, the bridegroom did come. Yeah. It, he was late in coming, and he didn't come until late in the midnight hour. <laughs> <laughs> but he did come. Yeah. Right? And there were five who were ready. Mm -hmm. And they had made preparations. Hello. They had made preparations. They had faith. They had hope. They had expectation. Therefore, they lived their life properly throughout the day, mm -hmm. rationing their oil, pacing their race. They were doing things, living in such a way that their actions proved that they were really actually waiting and hoping and expecting and believing for the bridegroom to come. Yeah. The, the other ones were like, eh, he might come, he might not come. He's, this is a long time waiting. And I, like the nation of Israel. Moses, he's been gone forever. I don't know if he's coming back. Let's make a golden calf. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like that kind of heart will suck out all your oil. It'll just use yeah. it up. It'll just consume it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? And so... And then verse 13, watch therefore, give strict attention, and be cautious and active, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. See, the Lord himself right there is like, you better kick that time frame to the curb, because it is not your business. <laughs> it is not for you to know, even when. Jesus said, as far as the return of him coming, he's like, I don't even know. Yeah. It's like the Father is greater than me. Well, how is the Father greater than you? Well, because Jesus is the Word of God that is in the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. He is the heart of the Father. Only the Father knows when he's getting ready to speak mm -hmm. and send his Word, mm -hmm. you know, to accomplish that which he's sending it for. He's yeah. the only one who knows that. The Word doesn't know when it's going to come out, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, put that in your collegiate level Christianity cooker mm -hmm. and feast on that later. <laughs> Also, I almost forgot this one story about the in Matthew 25 is also the story of the talents. And in the talents, it's another story of, hey, I'm giving you some talents. I'm going to go on a journey and I'm going to come back. And it seemed like the master was gone a long time. It's like, I thought you would have been he would have been back by now. I figured, I mean, I mean it's, it's after five o'clock. Doesn't he get off at five? <laughs> Shouldn't he be coming around the mountain? Yeah. <laughs> You know, but it's like the bottom line is you don't know when he's going to come. Yeah. You know, so don't put the time frame on the promise, but just know, put your faith and hope and expectation in his character who promised and he will come and he will do it. Yeah. And so and so he just showed me there's two examples right there in Matthew 25. The, the gist of it is like, I will come, mm -hmm. but who's going to be waiting? Who's going to be the wise and who's going to be the foolish? Who's going to be the wise servant that when his master does show up, he finds him doing what he's supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. not off doing some other stuff. And so then that takes me to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Uh, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. So it's like it touches on the Matthew twenty-five thirteen about being cautious and active and aware. And it's like, live your life in a certain way. It's like, what does Peter say? How, how then shall we live, considering all this great thing that God's done for us and how he's revealed himself to man and died for us and all that? Mm -hmm. How should we then live? We should live in holiness and reverent fear of the Lord, not being afraid of God, yeah. but but just like he's going to come. So <laughs> we better li be living right. We better be living lives that are worthy of the blood of Jesus and the spirit of God living in us, mm -hmm. not living for ourselves. And so that's what the enemy, when he comes, he always comes to want to make you focus on yourself. 
to make you think about yourself and all be about yourself. Even the promise being fulfilled, make it about you. And it's like, no, it's not about me. I'm going to get the benefit from it. I'm, listen, if I'm working at my father's restaurant, you know I'm going to be snatching some food and eating here, eating there, eating there. You know what I mean? I'll, be, I'll be too hungry. But by the time the food is already ready to be served, I'm full. I'm good, man. I've been nibbling all day. You know, just kept prepping this food, but I've been eating some of it as well. So we know that he is going to come. You know, God gave me other examples. Before I get to Luke 18, 1 through 8, because that's the gist of everything that I really feel like. But there was buildup. God was like, you got to throw this in the stew as well. Yeah. You know, God reminded me of Jeremiah. He prophesied. He was like, listen, if you don't repent, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come mm -hmm. for 40 years. He prophesied that, right? I mean, it was, I don't know the yeah. exact time frame, but it was a long time. He was saying, yeah. hey, 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 hey. And then, and eventually they, they didn't repent. And what he said, it did happen. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, you don't want to have that happen. Listen, God gave Joseph. I know we use these examples a lot, but I think there's something in the wisdom and the spirit of God that's like, I'm going to keep using these examples through Devin and Michelle on their channel for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And it's like, God gave Joseph a dream. Mm -hmm. Did it happen? Yes. yes, it did. And that was thousands of years ago. Yeah. He, he's not waiting on this vision still. You know? yeah. He's not waiting on that word to be fulfilled in his life. Yeah. You know, God gave um, Abraham a vision. It's still being fulfilled to this mm -hmm. day. That, that's a mind boggle. Let's just put that aside. But that's just what something else the Lord wanted me to add. David, another classic example, he went through some heck. <laughs> okay? He went through a lot. He went through a lot of pain, a lot of... But he, he, he entered into his promise. It did happen. You see what I'm saying? And so the enemy will come along and try to throw all kinds of what we, what we might call bugaboos on you to get you to think about yourself. Because you're only going to have two focuses. You are literally only going to have two focuses in this thing that God has created called reality. You're going to focus on him or yourself. It's going to be one of those two. If you focus on yourself, well, expect anxiety, misery, pain, grief, and all that. Not that we don't have that. It's just if we focus on that, then we're going to focus on how can we take care of that. But if we're focusing on God, even the pain that we experience, well, then we're naturally we're going to take it to him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that leads me to our core text. Turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 18. <laughs> You're just sitting here cracking up at me. <laughs> So anyway, so but I am going to read this, okay? It's a very familiar scripture, but I just feel like, man, this is the part where God's like, okay, just listen to what I'm listen to what I'm trying to tell you people. Um uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart and give up. Man, that right there is a video. Anyway, he said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither reverenced and feared God, nor respected or considered man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him, who kept coming to him, and saying, protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. i got to stop right there interrupt myself. Um, Isaiah 62, behold Israel, 62 verse 6 I believe, says behold Israel, it's like I have set watchmen upon your wall who will not give the, give the Lord peace day or night until the righteousness and justice is, is established in Jerusalem. Because yeah. I'm just going to be praying about it all day, all night, that is my life. That's literally, and God's like, I have put watchmen in place to do that very thing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what, don't they have jobs? It's like, yes, that is their job. And I'm providing for them and showing them that that's exactly what I've called you to do. And when I call you to do anything, it don't matter what it is, I'm going to provide for you to be right on that wall doing what I've called you to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like day and night, constantly coming, constantly seeking. Okay? And it's like, and for a time he would not. That means the judge would not protect and defend and give justice against the adversary who's roaming around like a lion trying to get you to focus on yourself. And for a time he would not. But later he said to himself, 
Though I have neither reverence or fear for God, nor respect or consideration for man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, <laughs> woo, I will defend and protect and avenge her, lest she give me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her continual coming. Let me tell you something. That right there is how everybody got a miracle from Jesus in the gospel. Right there. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, hey, man, quiet down. Jesus is passing by. He's a very highly respected spiritual leader. I don't care, Jesus. You need to come help me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, man, what, what, what do you need? And that, he got his miracle. He got his sight. He got, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. just got to keep crying out. But anyway, um, so uh, this is an intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her continual coming or at the last she come and rail on me or assault me or strangle me. Meaning she, she be in such grief, she's going to take my life because I'm ignoring her. She's going to turn all that pain onto me. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he was afraid. It's like, then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, exclamation point. And will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones, who cry to him day and night? Will he defer, hope deferred makes the heart sick? What is that? Proverbs 13, 12. Mm -hmm. Will he defer them and delay help on their behalf? Oh, Lord, why, do we, why are you deferring the promise forever? Have you forgotten us? No, I have not. Of course mm -hmm. not. Verse 8. I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, oh, ho, ho, that is the, that's the tent peg in the whole thing right there. However, when the Son of Man comes. Now, did he say if the Son of Man comes? No. Did he say, did he, he didn't. He used one word, when. <laughs> when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith? on the earth. Oh, Jesus. Persistence in faith on the earth. Mm -hmm. And so, God is saying, like, listen, I am going to come and fulfill the word I've spoken over you. Let's back it up for a second. I feel like the Lord's saying this. He's like, listen, you guys, you need to understand this. Every human being who's ever existed and who ever will exist, I have spoken an abundance of things over their lives that they haven't even heard yet. Mm. I have written a plan for their lives that is so amazing that it's like they haven't seen it yet. He's, God's like, I don't do that. I don't create a person without that in place. Because mm -hmm. I, I, create, I create Michelle... I know what her name is. I know how long she's going to live. I know what I want her to do. I know I know everything. And it's all awesome. <laughs> it's all with purpose and deep satisfaction promised. All of it. Of course, living in this world, you're going to go through pain and all those things that the Bible says, don't, don't be surprised if you're going through this. Your Christian brothers all over the world are going through this. This is normal. Mm -hmm. But after you've suffered a little while, that's actually 1 Peter 5, 9 and 10. You know, because I read 5.8. Yeah. But it's like after you've suffered for a little while, then God will establish you. God, It says he will establish you. He will do these things. It's like God has an amazing plan for everybody. And so it's like you can, you can put your tent peg of faith in that. And the fact that he said these things, that, that, that this is true about you. If you doubt maybe what you heard from God is true, or not, you know it's in the word. The word of God says this is true. But for those of you who know you've heard from God and you've gotten promises, you've gotten vision, you've gotten, it's, it's clearly just, it's beyond the, it's past the test. And you know you've heard from God about such and such a thing. You're going to do this. You're going to go here. You're going to meet these people. You're going to be involved in this thing. This is the effect you're going to have. You're going to be in this industry or that industry. You're going to do these things and that thing. You know what I mean? These kind of things were prophesied over Israel Houghton before he was even alive. And, it, like, literally everything that this, this random guy came up to his mom and said, hey, this is what's going to happen with your son, blah, 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 left, she never saw that guy again. And sure enough, everything that guy prophesied from the Lord about his life has happened. I mean, everybody knows who Israel Houghton is, not everybody, 
Um, you know. Let me see. You don't know who Israel is? No. Girl, we need to rewind the video. No, <laughs> you know, rejoice in the Lord always. You don't know that one? <laughs> oh gosh, I what else? What else? He's a singer. He's a worship leader. You know. <laughs> The bottom line is, after that long edit, <laughs> if God, God has spoken words over your life, you know it's from the Lord. All you have to do is wait on it. That's literally what you have to do. It's like God saying, I am going to come. Listen, because we've been, we've, been, we've been getting hit lately, I think, with a sense of like, wow, I don't know if I can take another day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can take another day of waiting. It's like, Lord, are we, are we going to... I mean, there's, there's things that pop into your mind and that you want to ask and question, but you know, you know what, I probably shouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I, probably, I probably shouldn't ask that question. Yes, I got the freedom to ask that question, but I know where that question's coming from. It's coming from a place of impatience and lack of faith, tiredness, exhaustion, just, oh my gosh, I don't think I can wait anymore. I'm going to lose it. You know, this money situation that we constantly have to revolve around and all of that. It just, it sometimes it piles up on us. Mm -hmm. you know, and we're just like, man, it would be so much better if things were different, right? But God's like, listen, Devin, I will come. Yeah. I will deliver you. I am ready to do that. I am going to do that. I am, but are you going to allow your heart to stay in a place of faith and expectation, believing what I said to you? I said it. Do you know that I said it? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, you said it. That's it. It's a done deal. Because I don't even speak it until it's already done in God time. Mm -hmm. It's already done. You just haven't, in your third dimensional earthly reality, you haven't caught up to the reality of it yet. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already telling you it's done. Mm -hmm. That's why you can look at someone like Israel Houghton <laughs> and see like, wow, look at that. And it's even more amazing than, than was prophesied. Mm -hmm. You can't contain in a prophetic word. I don't care if, you're, if you have a prophetic word over someone's life and it's 300 pages. You can't contain everything that God's going to do mm -hmm. in that person's life from that word. Even if yeah. it is 300 page long, that's a long prophecy. But anyway, <laughs> just saying like God is saying... Look, guys, if you want to know my heart, I, I, really, I really derive tremendous, flavorful pleasure from people who believe what I'm saying. Yeah. Who believe in me. And God's not holding anything against anybody for getting hit by the enemy and doubting sometimes and wandering. We all have those moments. There's not a human being alive that's not going to have those moments. Look, Apostle Paul had had those moments. You know, everybody has those moments where they just get hit. And they're just like, man, I'm done. And you know you're not. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. It's like and you're, you're back in faith. And you're like, no, what am I thinking? No. This, you know, apparently you just had a moment. Okay, you had a moment. Big deal. We all have moments. But I'm I mean, saying. I mean, even like, like John the Baptist, you know. Exactly. He, one, he had a know, moment. <laughs> he, was, he was prophesying and he declared who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And yet when he was in prison. And things just were not, I think, going the way that he really thought that they would go. Yeah. It, he sent, he had, you know, his, some of his disciples literally go to Jesus and yeah. ask him, like, are, are you the one? Are you the one? Was I hearing properly? <laughs> did I? Did I was I practically caught wrong? up into heaven, but I mean, maybe that was just the lunch I ate the you other know, day. You know, but it just shows you, it's <laughs> like, you, you have moments like that. Sure. You know, I just, for me, it's been a really just hard, hard Couple just a days, few days, almost a week, week. Of, <laughs> of just, I feel like I keep going back and forth. There's these moments of just like, all right, Lord, you are going to do it. Okay. But then I have these moments of just like, I feel like I'm just drowning and it's just like, Lord, just well, you're please. drowning in the waiting, and the right? Waiting because you don't sorrow. doubt that God's going to do what he said he's yeah. going to do. Yeah. You don't. You're just like, oh my gosh, when? Yeah. Because the pain of the waiting is just, it's killing me. And and it, I kind of felt like, you know, we did that video about like, you know, we're just on this long road trip and it's in the desert. Oh. And I had this like picture even just this morning of like, here I was and, and the, the car was stopped 
but it was almost like I had just gotten to this point where I was like, I can't take being in this car anymore. <laughs> like, I get out, and I just, like, I have this vision of me, like, on the side of the road, kind of just throwing this fit, and just like, <laughs> no, I am not getting back in that vehicle, because I know it's just going to go on forever. This is not, like, it's never going to end. But then at the same time, I know, well, if I don't get back in the vehicle, I'm just going to be stuck here. And, and it was just like... <laughs> It's like, you know. Going through hell, <laughs> don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> just keep, just going. keep going. Go through. <laughs> just, just keep going. I know you can't go any faster than the driver's letting you go, but just keep going. <gasps> but it was just this, like, it was a great picture, really, for me personally, of just, oh, like, Jesus. where my heart That's was. So awesome. Because I was just like, oh, this is so frustrating because it's like, I know that it's like I know that there really is no other place I'd rather be than in the vehicle but yeah. it's like I'm so it's like you know there are times when you're just like oh my gosh I can't take this anymore I gotta get out and the droning <laughs> on yeah. and on yeah. just in this car <laughs> it's like you feel like you're on a treadmill yeah you know and the scenery is just passing you by what isn't that the same mountain yeah is this like, on like a 16 hour cycle or yeah. something? <laughs> it's like what's going on here it's like it's like, isn't that the same bush yeah. we saw like two days ago? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got the same red shade on the side there. Yeah. What's it's, up? It's the same you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. And so it was just like, you it's know. Brambles. But, <laughs> but I think like you're saying, though, it's like God knows. He knows what we go through. He knows our hearts. He obviously does because I really felt like that vision. It was really from the Lord. He was like, here, I'm, I'm just showing you. I'm giving you a picture. Of, yeah. I know exactly where you're at. And I know what's going on in your heart. And I, but it's almost it, like, it's like we've had a baby that's like been raised 18 months in a van in the desert going down the road. Yeah. It's like we've had birthdays in this van. We've had, can we go somewhere else, man? Yeah. It's like, can we hit some civilization? <laughs> Something. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, he about to be two. And, you, and like, you know, and it really is like we're, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, <laughs> God's the driver. It's like we're all in the back seat going, are we there yet? Are oh, we there yet? Oh, it's so sad, are we there but yet? it's just the are truth. Are we there yet? <laughs> are we there yet? And he's like, no, guys, we're not there yet, but just <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> so I just think it was just it was just really cool. I, I, I was just like, yeah, that's pretty much where my heart was this morning. And, yeah. and just like, you know, because the truth is, it's like the pain really, it is real. And the Lord really knows. And it can be all-consuming and overwhelming. It really can. It can be. And but that's where it it is saying like the Lord's like hey just you know he's been telling us like constantly of just like just keep looking to me keep looking to me if you can just look to me and it's like he really does give us he can give us lifelines you know you might think that it's like a string that's about this big and usually it's like you know for me there's there can be literally a thread of truth that the Lord's like if you can just take that it's gonna bring you out mm. of where you're at. Wow. And, and it does every and time. And it does every time. Every time. Every you time. Do. You, you just need a little nudge in the right direction. You're like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but it really has, I mean, I, I wish I could explain just like the depth this over this last week of just the pain and, and just that, I don't know, just being in this place of you such just kind of deep, in the done deep place. sorrow. Yeah. And and it's not just not receiving something. It's it really is there is just a just a deep place of of pain and just you know, there were just like certain moments. Yeah. And and it was yeah. just like, wow. But then Very at the same real. time there were there were um just some visions that the Lord's even been giving Devin lately that have just been so amazing because I'm just like, wow. It really just encourages my heart because it's like the Lord's like, I see you. And and there's a, um, actually in Isaiah, I think it's 51 or 49. I, One of those two. We've been reading both of them a lot. So, um, but he really talks, to, I think it's 49. Because, he, you know, there's um, verse uh, 4 in that, that chapter. He, you know, Jeremiah, uh, I mean, get Isaiah. It? Yeah, you want to, let me get it. So it's Isaiah um, chapter 49, verse 4. Verse 4. So it says, Then I said, I have labored in vain. 
I have spent my strength for nothing and in empty futility. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense is with my God. And Whoa, that's like Isaiah 35 verse 4. Yes. Talks about recompense. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's like there are just these... You know, I think there's moments in our life, even Isaiah, yeah. he's saying here, he's like, I feel like I've wasted, like, all my time. <laughs> like, nothing has changed. The what biggest have prophet been... in history is like, <laughs> I, this was pointless. Yeah. <laughs> and and yet, the Lord, and yet, he, he, though, is still showing, though, his faith and his trust is in God alone. Yeah. And he's saying, but, but everything is, my recompense is with God. So, you know, I might be feeling these things. I might be thinking all of these things, but I will, it is in God's hands. And, you still need this? and actually, yeah, okay. um, because then, you know, there's just this idea where um, you continue reading and it's like, he's like, you might, that feeling of we've been forgotten. You know, when is this going to happen? But the Lord then says, he's like, I, how, um, verse 15, it's like, can a, a woman forget her nursing child? <gasps> That's where that is. Okay. Praise the Lord. Completely <laughs> random moment right there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yes, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. And Jesus. it's like, okay, you know, if you're a mom, like, and you're nursing your child, trust me, you don't forget. You're not like... Oh, that's right, I have a child to feed. Yeah, it's totally like, you, you just don't forget. <laughs> but God's like, even if, even if that woman does forget, which is kind of like one of like, those... That, like, never that's happens. never going to happen, yeah, or it yeah. doesn't. If it but does... even if it did. Even if it did, yeah. I am telling you, I will not forget. Jesus. And it's like, God said, I will not forget glory you. Glory to your name. Lord He's Lord like, Lord. I have mm -hmm. a plan glory, and a purpose. Glory, glory. And, you know, I'm also reminded glory, of, um, I don't know where it is, maybe you do, but it basically says, like, you know, don't give up doing good. Don't give up, like, oh. your, because your labor is not in vain. Oh, that's 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. Yeah, because it's like we might, you might feel that. There's a reason the Lord said that in Scripture, because the truth is you're going to probably feel the weight of that. A lot. And just be like, wow. <laughs> Like, Especially because the master's away. It's yeah. like, I thought he would have been here. I thought the promise would have come by now. Mm -hmm. That's where that song, Do It Again, comes from. Mm -hmm. I thought these mountains would have been moved by now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like... It's there, the weight. It, it is. That, it's that heaviness of the weight that says, man, we've been doing, you know, planting vineyards. We've been doing everything that we've been asked to do. But, man, like, have we done where, this? Where's the glory? Where where is our master who said he where was going to come he? back? Yeah. And and it is it's just like there. I think if anything that I've really received from this week is just like one that God really He knows our hearts mm -hmm. and He does have just He has grace for us. Um, that's been a word I, I haven't really gotten to really dive into it, but I feel like that's kind of been something that's been on my heart. Um, even in the uh -uh. midst of everything, <laughs> is is in the just mist. that yeah, in the midst. In the midst. In the midst Girl, of you more the... Southern Baptist than you think. <laughs> you in the midst. <laughs> you know the steam. And the... <laughs> so even with everything going on, it's like there's just been this idea Ooh. of just the grace of of the Lord mm -hmm. and. And um, grace, grace. I just and I read this yesterday. It was actually an Alana Vasa word that I didn't even finish because I was just in a place where it was like, wow, this is just too much for my heart. But um, yeah, but it was. You're, just, you're in a place of prophetic pain. Hey, let's get a prophetic word. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome. Just, just salt ointment. the wound right there. <laughs> But, Anybody got any grapefruit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, but in it, it was talking about this scripture where it's like, my grace is sufficient for you. And and it's like, you know, in, in just that in our weakness, we are made strong. 
and it's like I just feel like the Lord just like hey my grace is with you and and being able to go through this wilderness time yeah. to be able to keep going and keep having faith and keep believing <clears throat> and keep waiting and and having that expectant hope you know I've just been that's kind of been a prayer of mine this week as well it's just like God help me to expect great things because yeah. it's been really hard this week as far as just like expecting the great things because the Lord told us you know keep doing what you're doing and expect me to move and do great things and he told us that back in like January and it was just like it was just really hard though like this week for me I'm just like yeah oh, Lord I want to expect you but I know like right now my heart is in a place of not expecting you to do great things yeah and, and it's like, God, I need your help. Because <laughs> like, here we are next week. It's going to be what? I mean, we're going we're gonna to be into July here in a minute. Yeah. And it's just like, it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen this year or whatever. You know, it's like we're going to be here this whole year and all of that. And it's just like, that's kind of how you felt when you prayed that impossible prayer. You're like, I want to get married this year, Lord. Yeah. And by the time June rolled around, you are like, well, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. And then June 16th happened, and yours truly showed up. The glory mm. showed up. <laughs> the glory of God was made manifest. Rolled up in an old, broke-down, black Chevy truck. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's the glory right there. <laughs> it, was, it was the garb of humility. It, it really was. Oh, man. That was some depth. That was some deep humility right there. Right there. Right there. Woo! But he did come, though, didn't he? He did. He did show up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, this is going to happen. So it's like, God's like, keep your faith alive. Keep your yeah. faith up. Keep rejoice. Sing your songs. Give praise. And put your heart in the right place. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the truth. It's like, you don't, we don't know. And I think, you know, that's where that timing factor comes oh in. Gosh. Because it, it works either monster. way. It is such a monster. Is a because, monster. you know, either you can start getting your expectations really high because you think, ooh, it's going to happen really soon. And that makes you excited and happy mm -hmm. and joyous. But then it's like, if there's even a slight feeling of just like, wow, this could be a really long way off. It takes that expectation level and just drops it to the basement. And you're just yeah. like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And it's like, ah, uh, you know. It, well, you're not going to wait at the door for a package that you know ain't going to come for like three months. Yeah. It's you know, like, no one's gonna, just, who's going to do that? I'll just, you know I'll just go saying? back here and do this, you <laughs> yeah. know. It's like, you're going to live on with life. You're going to go on with life. But God's mm -hmm. like, no, I want that faith, hope, and expectation for me showing up. I want that to be your life. Yeah. I want you to, I want me, the, the expectation of me arriving and showing up and doing great things, that is your life. Mm -hmm. It was in Deuteronomy 32, I believe, somewhere in there. It says this, this word of God, this life that you have, it, it is your life. It's mm -hmm. not a trifle. It yeah. is your li it is your very life, and it's it's the, it's the way you're going to teach your children, even. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and the truth, I mean, really, the truth is, it's like you know, we talk about, you know, wanting the Lord to show up and expecting Him to show up, and those are that's specific to particular promises sure. in our lives. But the yeah. truth is, it's like God's like, I am literally ready to save and show up in your life every day. Yeah. And every and second of every day. Yeah. And he really does. Because it's like that's what we really need him for. We need him every single day. Mm -hmm. Every second of our, our life. We need the Lord. And and it's like, you but know. But he does have and, but the then big he has, promises. He has the, big promises for us too. For us too, you Just know? like, you know, with Abraham and, and just, you know, he had... A relationship with the Lord every single day but he also had the faith and the belief for this huge thing which was that he would have a son yeah and and it was just like and but there did it came a time when he held the baby in his hands yep. he held the promise yep. and and it came at a time when he probably least expected it yep. and it was like now <laughs> he's probably, he probably feeling a little desertish himself just yep. like all right let's Time to get up and do what we do today. And just, you know, well, yeah. You know, 
beat the beat the rugs. And yeah. <laughs> beat the kids. And, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, Ishmael was a handful anyway. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and just like even even for Sarah, you know, there is a reason why both Abraham and Sarah laughed. Yeah. You know, like, because no. it's just like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> like, I'm, you know, Sarah's like, I'm 90 years old. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have a baby now? Like, that's just crazy. Like, that's and even so Abraham funny. was like, I'm old, basically. Yeah. I'm an old guy. Like, I can't have a kid now. But the Lord's like, hey, you know, nothing is impossible. It's already with June. Him. There ain't no way I'm getting married this year. It's already June. Yeah. I ain't even I met anybody. I don't even know anybody. I don't even know anybody <laughs> interested in me. I'm a just June. I ain't getting married this year. Yeah. But when did you get married? December. That year. That year. December twentieth. The end of the year. Mm-hmm. He waited. But the thing of it is, God actually didn't wait to the end of the year, did he? He got you hooked up in the middle of the year and then you did get married at the end of the year but it's not like you were waiting and anxious toil and oh yeah. god my heart my heart until the end of the year no that didn't happen no you know yeah so lord <laughs> let us not wait let this be the week jesus <laughs> shower down <laughs> this blessings day, from heaven you know they say like this this time next year yeah this time tomorrow <laughs> In this Jerusalem. time tomorrow. That's going to be my new prayer. <laughs> this time tomorrow. <laughs> Lord, is it today? Is it today? How no? About, how about okay. now? <laughs> it's like, yeah. How about now? How about now? How about now? How about now? Now. <laughs> it's like, God just has fun. He does. He just has so much fun. But he does. He understands our pain. Mm -hmm. He gets it, man. No one's gone through the kind of pain that Job's gone through. You know, mm -hmm. no one's gone through the kind of pain that Jesus went through on the cross. But it's like, yeah. he understands the pain. He understands what's going on in here with us, you know. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, I will come, my people. I yeah. will. But you've got to be in position. you got to be, I, I want to come and give you the things that you're hoping for. I am going to come. Mm -hmm. But it's like, will I find the faith? Will mm -hmm. I find the belief? Will I find the confidence? Will I find the hope in me that's required to receive? You know what I mean? It's like, you got. I, I'm like a mailman. I'm going to come and I'm going to put the mail in, but it's got to be able to, I got to be able to open it and mm -hmm. put it in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and Jesus even said, I know, um, I think it's the Luke, was it 1249, 1049? I don't know. But it basically, <laughs> Jesus was saying like, I've I've come with fire, and I just wish. Oh, that's wish, Luke twelve forty nine. Yeah. Yeah, I wish that they were already kin like they were. I wish the fire was already, was already kindled. kindled. Yeah. And you know, like a kindling, that's not much of anything, mm -hmm. but it's like if you have that already there, you can just ignite it, you know, yeah. and, and and it's time for some s'mores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but when Jesus came, he really was like, there wasn't that faith. Or that kindling that he was looking for. Especially in his own hometown. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't there. Yeah. And so he couldn't do anything. He came. He did come. But he couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so, guys, don't let that be you. Don't be the person that Jesus, he does come, and you miss the visitation. You miss the opportunity. And we are believing in the name of Jesus right now. I'm just saying right now in Jesus' name, that is not going to be you. Mm -hmm. Whoever you are watching this, you are going to continue to believe. And you're going to see the glory of God. Because why? God is faithful to fulfill his promise over your life. Mm -hmm. And you're going to pick yourself up. You're going to do whatever you need to do to throw yourself into the presence of God. And be like, God, help me. God, I got some pain, I got some issues, I got some hurt, but I'm coming to you because mm -hmm. you're the only one who can help me. That's why I call you my Savior. That's why I call you my Lord. Help me out. Help mm -hmm. me to walk this out. Help me to believe in the purpose and promise that you have for me because I know it's going to go beyond me. Yeah. Just as every promise that you manifest in every person's life in the Bible goes beyond them. Yeah. And, and it impacts people like us talking about it today. Yeah. You know, so let God use you that way. Let let the Lord be your 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 necessary bread, your necessary mm -hmm. food, 
You know, don't don't look to how you're feeling and what's going on and the pain and don't look to that. You know, it is there. God sees it, but, but look that to Him. You that know, that doesn't paint the truth either. Yeah, it's it's a reality. The pain is real, but so is His Word. Mm-hmm. You know, and it is just I feel like it's the Lord's heart is like I am coming, I yeah. will come, but will you be waiting? And basically, it's almost like please be waiting. Yeah, <laughs> it's like wait for me. I'm going to come. You know, don't, 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 don't shack up with another dude just because I didn't come on time. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, don't, don't go out on another date, you know, you know with some other thing that, to give your heart to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Just, I will come. So please be yeah. waiting, you know? And I guess what I was thinking is just like with like the feelings and it's like, don't let that be your truth. It's like, I know for myself personally, it's like because I feel a certain way, then I'm just like, well, oh. I'm, I'm gonna just feeling based truth. Yeah, yeah, but just that, like, <laughs> I I start to just like want to discount myself. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not worth the reward. Like I've been going after the reward, but a trick man, too, isn't I'm it? just yeah. I'm, I'm feeling all these things, and I have. Lord, I've doubted. I've done this and I've done that. I messed up. So. I've messed up. So therefore, I'm not even worth the Lord giving me a reward. And it's and the Lord's like, like, listen, do you want this or not? Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I declare you worthy. That's you the want truth. It? It's like we have to allow God to declare who we are and believe what the Lord speaks over our lives. Yes. And, and trust what He is saying. Let Him be judge over Come your on. life and just keep going to Him. Yes. And and yes. it's listen like for me personally like it can be very difficult. I have a hard time sometimes going to the Lord because of all the feelings and just you know how I'm judging myself. And it's like okay God, I just have to. There's just moments where it's just like oh my gosh, I get to this point where it's like okay Lord, I just need you. I'm <laughs> like you know, but it's like He has to be judge. He's the one who who's going to come in and trust me it's like if you continue to go to the lord Mm -hmm. with everything you you will receive the reward that's what an overcomer is Mm -hmm. you know they are somebody who just okay they fall down they get in a pit well they ask the lord for help and he takes them out of the pit and you just keep going and you keep pursuing after him that is someone who overcomes you know it's not someone who perfectly does everything and so there's I just, only one of those. Yeah, his name and was his Jesus. name was Jesus, and he is, is the Jesus. ultimate <laughs> overcomer. Yeah, you know because he overcame sin and death. Mm-hmm. And and so it's like just just what you know if you're similar to me or just that kind of like can be a person that can tend to discount yourself because of condemn your, yourself and condemn basically. yourself is what you're doing. Yeah. It's just. Hey, take it to God and allow Him to minister to you. Allow Him to be the decider and the judge over yeah. your own life. And, and free you from the shame and all the and, stuff that goes with it. And, and even in that, because it can be difficult, because you're going to think, <laughs> you know, you've already condemned yourself, so you're going to figure, well, God Himself is going to condemn me. But it's like, just let Him do it. And trust me, I just believe it's like, you're not going to receive from God what you think you are. And and it's like, because you can, ha- you know, totally be afraid. Right. You know, even you've talked about it, how, like, you're afraid, like, you know, like, or you've had these moments where you're like, God's just probably going to scold me and be like. Oh, well, yeah, those two nights. Yeah, those two those nights, two nights, nights where I'm it's like, just yeah, like, he's going to tell he's me. He's going to be like, you're, you're this you're that you need to change this you need yeah, you to do need to this you need to be a little more gentle you yeah, need to be yeah. a little more Christ like and but instead you just receive something completely amazing. different yeah and it's amazing and like, so I did not see that coming exactly I am very encouraged right now you yeah. know <laughs> yeah so it's like I think we're just you can have those moments with the Lord where he it's just like oh I didn't expect that and it is just he is always there to encourage, especially his own. Yeah. You know, he's just, he is a merciful God. And so just continue to good, go to good him. Father. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all I have. Yeah, well, I think that's all we have. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all the Lord has. <laughs> no, you know he's got more. He always but anyway. has more. <laughs> <laughs> but we just love you guys and appreciate you guys. And, um, 
Also, if you've made it this far in the video, do consider giving to us this week um, as we pretty much need financial help every week. Um, and uh, we just pray blessing over you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we really do hope you receive this in the right spirit in the sense that like God, this is, I really, we really feel this is from the Lord mm -hmm. saying, hey, I will come. Will yeah. you be waiting? Let your answer be yes. Yeah. You know? So, until next video. We will see you later. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>